I'm Rose, and with this video, I'm going to start a little series that I'm calling Relearning Art. In case you're wondering what that means, I'm someone who used to draw a lot and make art quite often, but at one point, I actually just stopped. I lost the direction that I was going with it and ultimately lost the motivation to keep going, so I never really developed the skills that I wanted to have. But these days, I've been wanting to try again. I recently got back into painting like this stuff that you'll see on my wall, but I just barely started getting into character drawings again, despite that being the thing I wanted to learn the most since I was about 12. So I decided that in order to learn character drawing properly this time, I would set myself up with a sort of course to learn each of the basic skills that I need to work on and achieve my desired results and develop a strong personal style. I thought I would document this process as a motivation to stick to the schedule, and in case there's anyone else out there who would like to do the same thing. But before I do that, I wanted to make a video reflecting back on all the old art I could find in order to give an honest representation of where I'm at before we begin. So with that, let's get into it. So actually, before we even get started with the sketchbooks, I'm going to be showing you some drawings here that I did on loose paper before I ever bought a sketchbook. I didn't actually start using a sketchbook until I was in the ninth grade and even then I kind of went back and forth between loose paper and sketchbooks so you'll see ones from when I was about 12 or 13 but some of them are even going to be as late as 15 or 16. So you'll see here that I started off with a very anime wannabe style. I was really into that at the time I would watch anime sometimes but really I got the idea for this style from Flipnote Studio. I used to go online on that all the time and I saw everyone else drawing anime characters and I really wanted to do the same thing. I thought it was so cool. So it was around then that I actually got my first how-to drawing book. I think it was called How to Draw Manga. It was huge. It was really really thick and I used that thing for years. It actually kind of started a trend. I collected a lot of how-to drawing books for different styles for years from what I remember. I wouldn't really watch a lot of online tutorials. I mostly got it all from the books. You've probably also already noticed that I have some drawings that I started learning how to color early on. At first I was just using whatever random markers or pencil crayons, sometimes it was a mix that I had around the house. Eventually, I started investing in Copic markers. I got so into Copic markers. They were so expensive, but I would just go to Michael's and buy like one or two, whatever I could afford, and collect them. And I think at one point I had like 50. <laughs> so it was a project to build that up. But eventually, I actually ended up losing them because I was moving and I didn't notice because I didn't use them anymore, that they were gone. So I went to look for my paint one day and that's also how I discovered my paint was also lost. So this is actually the point right now where I started learning a little bit of realism in my high school art class. And you'll see once we get to the second or third sketchbook that that started to influence my style a little later on. Um, but I still really continued on with this anime thing. We're really getting into like when I got really consistent at one point. I used to draw so much at this point. It was probably every day, multiple times a day. I don't know if I ever put my pencils down. But you might also notice that this is a period of time when I started really building like a consistent style. I started experimenting more. I kind of learned a bit more about anatomy poses. Not formally, but enough that I was starting to get pretty comfortable with it. This was like the golden era of my drawing days. Sometimes I even look back on this now and I think it's really weird if I wouldn't have changed my habits at some point. I wonder where I would be. Um, but here's my first sketchbook. So this is actually the first sketchbook that I bought and I bought it for my ninth grade art class because I was required to have one. So no more loose pages, but you'll see that this is full of class assignments. Some of them are kind of funny to look back at, um, but I really started learning some of the more formal things here like shading and lighting. 
that I didn't practice so much on my own because I was so obsessed with characters. So I started getting a little bit of an understanding for everything. I thought I was so cool with that red project. Anyway. I recognize a lot of drawings in here actually that were kind of a big deal to me at the time. There is my first really important original character. Um, you'll see that I have a few that I repeat drawing a lot in my sketchbook. And even here you'll see at some points I started like redrawing older drawings right beside them just to kind of show myself up because I thought I was again like so funny. And you'll see like some of these, the difference wasn't even more than a month because I decided to change a major element of my style and I thought it did such a difference that I needed to go back and just see how much better I could do. Um, but that was really motivation to keep going. So it was a good habit to have. Then at this point I started practicing. There's some more like small drawings, full body drawings, headshots, just like all sorts of things. I would cover the whole page. And like I said, I used to draw a lot in this period of time. So this is definitely my most full sketchbooks. You'll see what I'm talking about later. I don't think I've covered anything nearly as much as I covered this book. So actually, once we get to about this point, you'll see that I did these drawings here based on a tutorial that I watched on YouTube. It changed everything for me. I was struggling so much with the eyes before this. So after I watched that tutorial, I got really into this particular style of drawing eyes and that started to become my main thing. At this point, you'll have already seen some of the drawings that I did after I made this style change. And that's because especially at this period of time, I did a lot of drawings out of order. Like I went back through the pages of my sketchbooks and did drawings on the earlier pages that weren't quite full enough, especially when I started running out of pages. So some of the drawings from earlier in the book are from later and some of the drawings from later in the book are from earlier. I don't know what I was thinking. But now that we're getting towards the end of this book, you've probably noticed that I even have a few redraws that I did like many years later. Some of them are from 2019. There's one even from earlier this year. But in 2019, I did have a brief phase where I kind of got back into drawing just a little bit. So I came back here just to get started by revisiting past work. All right, here's my second sketchbook. This one was primarily from 10th grade. I think it may have lasted until 11th grade. Um, it's not as full as the first one. You'll notice I only drew on one side of each page instead of both sides like I did before. Um, that's because this honestly wasn't that great of a sketchbook. So the pencil would transfer a lot and it was probably also do the pencils that I was using. I just use mechanical pencils. I still do. I won't lie. But anyway, this one was kind of a big deal because it's when I started changing my style from the anime style to this like weird semi-realistic style because I started doing those portraits in class and I wanted to try incorporating those elements into my own drawings. So you'll see a lot of back and forth. But you'll also notice this is a part where things started to get weird. So I had a lot more started drawings that I abandoned either because I didn't like where they were going and I just didn't even feel like erasing them. So you'll see that I scribbled them out and then I started on a new page. But anyway, this is when I really started latching on to that kind of semi-realistic style. I was trying to figure out what all the elements would be. And even though I started to like drawing in this kind of style, it did really frustrate me. But I was kind of starting to grow out of the anime thing. I thought I needed to do something different. So I turned to this and to be fully honest, I didn't really know what to do. Okay, sketchbook number three. We're really getting into this. Um, 
This one I started in 11th grade. I was kind of going back and forth between this sketchbook and the second one, but you'll see some very strange things. Obviously, again, a lot of starting and stopping these like weird scribbles and half drawings because it was hard to take anything seriously at this point. Around now, I also started getting into this phase where I would draw pictures of my friends where they were making like strange faces. I don't think I have any in any of these sketchbooks, but I did use them as references sometimes when I needed to draw certain features. So just know that some of these drawings are a mash of like my imagination and their real features. And I actually think that's kind of funny because I was very much under the impression that it was bad to have references when drawing. I obviously don't think so now, but I would use real people as references. But I thought it was cheating to like look at drawings or references made for drawings. So I don't know what that was about. Um, and here's actually a couple drawings of my cats as Animal Crossing villagers that I did in 2020 because what else would I do in 2020? But anyway, we've made it to sketchbook number four. This one was mostly in my year off of high school um, between graduating and my first year of university. I just took a year off to work. You would have thought that maybe during that time I would have drawn a little bit more. However, I really started slowing down at this point. I still like a few of these drawings like this one, um, but I got into this weird thing where I only drew in colored pencils because I couldn't find any of my better pencils and I guess I just wouldn't buy anymore. But anyway, clearly at one point I found some pencils and you can see here, I redrew this old character that you might recognize from one of my past sketchbooks. I think it was sketchbook number two. Um, and did a couple more character drawings. Here's where it started getting really sparse. A lot of these are spaced really far apart. But basically, the sketchbook lasted me from like 2017 until 2021. So that tells you how much I used it. Like here's some. Here's some from 2021. I specifically remember doing these while I was supposed to be doing online classes. But I did have another brief stint at drawing again in this part. You'll see I redrew that character again and I did it twice because I didn't like either of them so I just kind of gave up. And I tried to draw a few other things that were just very unserious. Okay, so this brings us to sketchbook number five. We're almost done with the sketchbooks here. Um, but as I said, I started drawing again a little bit in 2021. Not with very much direction though, so this didn't last long, though there are a few drawings. Then I picked up a little bit again in 2022 with these two character drawings. Um, I was experimenting with the style. You could really tell I was kind of lost. I didn't really know what to do. This one I was proud of. Um, I tried redrawing some old characters for fun. And then I didn't pick up again until earlier this year. But the good news is that this is when things start to get a little bit better. Um, this was about February of this year. I slowly started drawing again. Not good drawings, but I started. I tried to distract myself sometimes by drawing things that weren't people, which I was better at. And then I tried to draw things that were a little bit more realistic, like there's me and my sister. Um, then you can see I really started getting experimental with styles and things that I was drawing. There's that character again. I feel like I should mention that at this time, I also started getting back into painting, which is why I picked up drawing again, because once I started searching for things about painting on the internet, I started getting suggested drawing tutorials on Pinterest, like just really small picture ones. And then I started having a bit of a style crisis because I realized I did not like my style anymore. It wasn't fun to draw in. I couldn't enjoy it. So here you'll see I started drawing a lot more and I was using those tutorials, using different sets of guidelines. I was drawing features in every single way I could think of. 
but really this was a lot of experimentation. I wasn't really sticking to any certain style. I was kind of trying to, but I was really just trying to figure out what I liked and what I didn't. And that brings me to my current sketchbook, sketchbook number six. It's filled with mostly Pinterest references that I've been trying to stylize, though I wouldn't say I have a distinct style right now. And these are definitely outside my comfort zone, so it's progress. All right, so I have a bit of a reflection on what we just saw. So as you already know, there was not enough consistency and not enough challenge for me to grow my skills to the point where I felt confident in my ability to draw. I at least know that the reason for this was because I had a pretty strong fear of failing. So I didn't like to try more complicated things when I knew that my first attempt was not going to turn out perfect. I was also pretty guilty for comparing my work to other people's when they were way ahead of me. And what I didn't see was that a lot of times those people had either been drawing for much longer or they challenged themselves more than I did on a regular basis. Over time, that made me even less secure about my abilities, so eventually I just settled for not being that good. By the time that I was rarely ever drawing, I thought I wouldn't be using these skills in the future anyway, so it wasn't really worth investing my time and effort in them, even if it was something I always really wanted to be good at. So generally, I would say it was both self-doubt and judgment that made it really hard for me to progress. Now that I'm trying this again, I'm also trying to give myself the space that I need in order to make bad drawings. Big deal. And this is all with the assurance that someday, eventually, I'll reach those goals as long as I keep trying. But now with all that being said, how about we take a look at what this course is going to be so that you have an idea of what it is. All right, so here's the plan for what I'm going to do. Um, first of all, I've broken down every concept I want to learn into its own unit. Each unit is going to be two weeks long. I'm going to give myself 10 units in total, so that should be about five months. Um, and then for each unit, I'm going to watch about four to six videos in total, so that'll break down to two to three videos per week. So the videos that I'm going to watch are going to be tutorials or how-to videos that I'm going to follow along with my sketchbook while I learn so that I can get some practice at the same time. Um, I'm going to spend at least 15 to 30 minutes every day just so I can build some consistency in my practice. Then actually at the end of each unit, I'm going to assign myself a cumulative project that will oversee everything I've already learned. All right, so now you can see that I'm writing down what the units are, the first being anatomy. Um, I'm just going in order of what I think is important. This isn't really based on anything in particular, but the ultimate goal here is to be able to create full and dynamic scenes. So I want to learn everything from the basics like anatomy and poses and faces to the more complicated stuff like color style, background, so you'll see that I'm putting in order of what I think is most to least important. So I'm actually going to make videos based on each individual unit. So every time that I post one, I'm going to make sure that I link all the resources that I use so that anyone else who may want to attempt the same thing can use the exact same materials I did. So that's basically everything you need to know, but just so you do know, this is going to be a long-term project. It should take about five months for me to get through it. Um, my goal ultimately is to feel confident in my art skills. I really want to have a distinct style of character drawing that is truly mine.
And I want to have the confidence to be able to create scenes that are more complex when they come to mind. And of course, my other goal really is just to have fun with it. I really hope that for other people watching, this will be fun as well. And it would be really great if this was a safe place for people to be able to talk about their goals when it comes to learning art. Or even if your goal isn't art, don't hesitate to leave a comment and share how your experience is going. Okay, so that brings us to the end of my very first video. Thank you for following along. If you enjoyed looking back at old art with me, you can like the video. It would really help me out. But if you want to stay tuned for new videos in the future, you can always subscribe to my channel. Hope that's not too cliche. Uh, but with all that being said, it looks like I've got some work to do. So hopefully I'll see you in the first unit. <laughs>